video for your tests coming up. Uh, we started talking about weather and climate with a slideshow and some notes. We started with a tweet here where the person confused weather and climate. I will go through this fairly quickly. We did look at our current conditions and we found out that um, this year's winter is much warmer than normal. But let's talk about some definitions. Uh, weather is what happens day to day. So these are the conditions of the atmosphere on a day to day or hour to hour basis. So we're looking at the current temperature, cloud cover, wind speed, direction, uh, if, if it's raining or not. Okay. Climate is the average temperature and rainfall over a large, uh, a long period of time. Usually we say as climate scientists, we're looking at about a 30 year average to determine our climate. And the climate of Burnsville, we said, typically we would describe Burnsville as having cold and snowy winters and warm summers. Okay, this is a climate graph. A climate graph shows um, during the course of the year. Now, every number down here represents a month, starting with January, February, March, and so on. So you got to know your months. And the blue bars indicate the amount of average amount of rainfall each month, and the red line indicates the average temperature for each month. And the scales you can see on the left y-axis is the temperature in both Fahrenheit and Celsius, and on the right y-axis is the amount of rainfall in millimeters or inches. What influence are what influences our climate? We use the acronym LOWERN, which stands for latitude, ocean currents, winds, elevation, relief, and nearness to water. We learned that latitude is uh, the uh, distance from the equator that you are. It's a location on our Earth. And the higher your latitude, all other factors being equal, the cooler your temperature would be for a climate. So equator tends to be the warmest part of the earth. And as you move toward the poles, uh, it tends to get colder. Our latitude is right at about 45 degrees north. So we're about halfway between the equator and the North Pole. Next was ocean currents. Ocean currents um, refers to the, we're referring here to the surface currents. And the idea of this is that um, some ocean currents originate in the Arctic and those can, or the Antarctic, and those can be cold water currents. And so when they go next to a continent, they can cool off the continent because the air above them is cool. Uh, contrary to that, um, currents that originate near the equator and um, move along the uh, east coast of continents tend to be warm water currents, and those would bring warmer temperatures. Okay, we watched this um, video or Ed Puzzle for some classes. Then we learned about these terms, gyre. A gyre is, let's just take a, a look here at what's happening in the North Atlantic. You'll see the warm water along the equator is moving from uh, east to west. Okay, I'm sorry. Scratch that. Um, <laughs> depends on where you're locating here. I'm looking um, right here as the current moves from Africa towards South America in the northern hemisphere. And then it turns toward the north and begins to cool off and then comes south. And so this is called a gyre. All right. What causes the currents to turn? and to go clockwise in the northern hemisphere and counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere, that is the spin of the earth. And so what we see here is warm water is brought to the east coast of continents along warm currents like the Gulf Stream is a warm current. Cold currents are along the west coast of continents like the Canary Current here or the California Current. And that tends to bring cooler air to those areas. In the southern hemisphere, the same thing. The currents are going the other direction, but still the warm water is being brought on the east coast of continents and the cold water is on the west coast of continents. Once again, these are called gyres. 
is flowing clockwise in the northern hemisphere and in the Indian Ocean we can see the Indian Ocean gyre is moving counterclockwise. The spin of the earth causes currents to turn to the right in the northern hemisphere. So here turns to the right, turns to the right. This is called the Coriolis effect and to the left in the southern hemisphere. Currents affecting climate by bringing cooler water and air to the west coast of continents and warmer water and air to the east coast of continents. Okay. And then we watch this video in class. I'm not going to do it right now. Then we watched, um, we reviewed the TED Ed video and then we did this assignment. This assignment was the one where you colored in the currents. Okay. You should have ended up with a map something like this and you showed the red the warm currents as red and you you know colored over those names in red and so on and so cold water currents are blue warm water currents are red we noticed that the ocean basin so in the north atlantic um, the gulf stream current is located there it's a warm water current and its flow is toward the north or northeast and so on you can see all of these as we go down. Based on the information, what if any relationship is there between the temperature of ocean current and the direction the current flows? Warmer currents generally flow north or south and away from the equator. That makes sense because they form at the equator. That's where they warm up. Why is that? More sunlight hits the equator, so the water is warmer. And that cycles away from the equator toward the poles. Use examples from the map to describe the idea of the world ocean. So the idea of, there's not, you know, however many different oceans, right? It's all one ocean. And it says the idea of the world ocean stems from the fact that the four main ocean basins are physically connected and are also exchanging water via the flow of currents like the west wind drift and the east and west Australian currents and Brazil currents. So the water is being all mixed together. Where on earth is most heat collected from the sun? Of course, at the equator. How can you tell that by looking at your map? You should notice that that's where the warm currents are concentrated. Number six, there were no correct answers. This refers to what happened um, as the premise to the movie um, the day after tomorrow when the North Atlantic current shut down. So we're not going to worry about those questions so much. Okay. All right. And then we finished off the notes with winds. Um, wind patterns can cause your climate to be warm or cold, depending on um, where the wind is originating from. Elevation, the higher you go above sea level, all things being equal, equal, the cooler it gets. Relief, this is the orographic effect, the idea that mountains, um, when wind hits a mountain, the air is pushed upward and then it drops any moisture in it. So we have what's called a windward side of the mountain that tends to be cooler and rainier and a leeward side when the when the air comes back down, uh, the air is now drier and uh, that tends to be a warmer area as well. Nearness to water, this was the moderating effect that we just saw in the other video as well. Um, areas close to water tend to have a moderate climate, meaning they don't get as hot or as cold as continental areas, places away from water. And that was it.